Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Nashville Fairground Speedway, where tonight, round number seven of the 10 race, Grisdale's Racing Products Winter Meltdown, presented by Caldecott Millwright Services and London Recreational Racing. Get ready to take the green flag for our qualifying event leading up to tonight's 100 lap feature here from the Nashville Fairground Speedway in Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Steve Ovens. Alongside Adam Ross, we'll be carrying you through the broadcast here tonight. And Adam, welcome to a, I will say it's my new favorite track on the pavement side of things. Welcome to the Nashville Fairground Speedway. This place is fun. It's a lot of fun for us watching. It is a tricky racetrack. It's tough to get the power down without the car getting loose. And it is very, very rough. We're going to see some physical racing and... Uh, I, I say this every week, but yeah, we're going to see more hurt feelings. <laughs> no doubt. You know what, man? I, I had to use that line last night uh, in in a dirt broadcast that we were doing. Uh, it was, it was uh, yeah. That's a that's a great that's a great line. There's no doubt about it. Um, we're getting ready to go with our qualifying event, which we will take ten cars out of here. Uh, out of this into our 100 lap A main. Uh, we've already got qualifying uh, time trials in the books. We've already set the lineup for the top 20 positions in tonight's 100 lap A main and getting ready to come out right now is uh, the B main. So uh, you'll see the drivers start to come across to your screen as uh, they roll out onto the racetrack and taking us away from the pole position here uh, is going to be DJ Christie and Jamie Dyson, a couple of very familiar names, Adam, that are going to lead us to the green flag. Yeah, a little surprising to see either of them in this B main. Eric Hinks was quick last week. We got David Miller out there starting seventh on the outside. It'll be Connor Ross in the 44. So lots of drivers who've seen lots of A main race time this year are having to come in through the B. Nashville Fairground Speedway, again, uh, coming to you from the virtual Nashville Fairground Speedway. Nashville, Tennessee, six-tenths of a mile around uh, this very tricky racetrack and uh, should be uh, a whole lot of fun here tonight. Partly cloudy skies, 79 degrees. Right now, the track temp at 83 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, winds not a factor. Uh, two miles an hour out of the north as we get ready to go green flag racing here with tonight's b main and uh sounded like we were going to send it over to steve ovens there with weather uh that was uh I, we've never done that before that was kind of fun all right here we go uh qualifying uh, the track 100 percent here for the uh track usage so it's going to get interesting here these guys have got quite a challenge and they've got 25 laps to do it green flag is out the b main here from nashville is underway DJ Christie, Jamie Dyson. Boy, they were really going at it there for the top spot as Christie got all sorts of loose coming off a of turn two. And that's oh. one of those tricky places on this racetrack, Adam. You're absolutely right. We had one up the wall on the backstretch. The extreme exit of these corners is we see one way loose further back in the screen. But there's high banking in the corners. You come off the turns, the track gets very, very flat. Man, it's tough to control these high horsepower, super late models as the track flattens out like it does. Caution flag coming out here for the first time in tonight's B main. Had an altercation here on the front straightaway. Saw two or three cars get tied up into that one. It almost had the uh, racetrack blocked. So had to uh, drop the yellow here. And Matt Thomas, our video partner from FLX Media Group, going to be providing us an instant replay here in just a moment. And let's take a peek. We had two incidents that took place. One there in turn number Je two. Yeah, Jesse Kennedy, if I'm not mistaken, in the 010, the dad's auto parts entry, as he makes the three-point turn on the backstretch. And then, like you said, something on the front straightaway that I did not catch. Well, let's take a look at it here. Oh, you know, may have gotten into the bumps there in three and four, and, and that's... Uh, you know, you talked about it a little bit, Adam. That's something that I think we're going to see quite a bit tonight. There's quite the there's quite the bump over in turn number four. And and if you're not prepared for it or if you're trying to race side by side and you and you hit that bump in turn four wrong, 
man, it will shoot the race car all over the place. And, and I think that that is definitely going to be a trouble area tonight as we work through not only tonight's B main, but our uh, 100 lap A main. That's going to be a point of contention later on tonight. I don't know how to explain it, but you almost have to massage the gas pedal with your foot coming up off the corner. You, you can't just hit the gas. You can't even roll into the gas. You kind of, it's like going over the whoop de doos in a, in a motocross event, right? You, you've really got to gingerly be on that throttle and let off when the car needs to be let off or you're going to spit out every time. So it's the driver that can control their acceleration. And if we do any onboards, are you able to go full sound on the onboards when, when we do them tonight? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, that'll be something to, uh, That'll be something to, to really drive home that point that you're making there, too. Yeah. Yep. In a dirt car, you often hit hit sort of bumps in the corner, and you'll hear the RPMs of the engine change or bog down a bit. On an asphalt car like this, you don't get that. When you hear the RPMs changing, that's because the driver is massaging that throttle, lifting just a little bit, feathering the throttle to keep the car under control. So working yellow here, five laps on the board, 20 to go here in tonight's B main, riding on board here with DJ Christie. I believe it'll be one to go as they come across the line this time by. Right now, Jamie Dyson, uh, your current race leader. DJ Christie running second. David Rockwood is third. Uh, Chris Bear running in four. And Connor Ross, how about Connor getting up into the top five there aboard car number 44. And again, we are taking the top 10 uh, into uh, tonight's A main. Right now, Eric Hinks, Blair Wicket, David Miller, Brandon McFerrin, and Tom Gibbons right now rounding out your top 10 as we get ready to come back to green. Some real fast cars outside of the top 10. Cameron Thompson, for one, he's been in a lot of main events this year. So there, we've still got some positions to be gained and lost as we're about to go back to green. Field getting ready to bring us back to the green flag. Green is in the air. Dyson took a little bit of a lower line there on the restart, trying to uh, keep that car as settled as he can as he accelerated there on the green, and they are working their way down the back straightaway, and we've got him crossed up. I think that's from about eighth place on back. Big incident there over in turn number three. Yeah, and David Miller in that 011 Tony Kart sponsored machine. I saw him get loose and overcorrect. He might have had some help there, but that's really what started it. Uh, looking back from this camera angle, the length of the front straightaway, David Miller in that 011 was, was kind of at the center of that hurricane. And unfortunately, they, you know, when, when they started uh, wrecking there, and you'll see it here. You know, there's not a ton of room on the back straightaway, you know, to dodge and weave if, if an incident breaks out like you saw right here. Um, the front stretch has a little bit more room to play with, but boy, when, when they get sliding across the racetrack on the back stretch here at Nashville, man, you got to uh, grip the wheel and uh, hold on tight, man, because there, there's not a lot of places, you know, to, to dive away from an incident. No, and if you hit the wall here, you're going to bounce off. That's what happened to David Miller there, caught Brandon McFerrin in the 64 on the way down, and once both of those cars started spinning down the backstretch, there was nowhere for anyone to go. Jamie Dyson will bring the 11, the APC Auto Parts ride across the line here, puts lap number 10 on the board. 15 to go in tonight's B main. We've had a couple of yellows here as uh, drivers kind of getting their selves sorted out here. And I think we'll get a quick opportunity here while we're uh, working this yellow flag. Let me see if I can locate. He's here somewhere. Uh, I was going to try and see if we can get a word here uh, quickly with Jamie Dyson, uh, who is the uh, race leader as they run right now. Jamie Dyson, uh, Steve Ovens up in the booth. He got a copy. I do. Hey, man, tell us about Nashville Fairground Speedway. Uh, this place is uh, a very tricky racetrack, but tell us about your perspective behind the wheel. Uh, this place is actually pretty fun. It's an uh, old, rough, beat-up racetrack. Uh, you got to hammer down, get uh, down in the corners, and uh, and get her off hard. Uh, but the bumps really play a factor. They throw you all around in the race car. 
it's it's uh i guess we'll call it a technical racetrack here at nashville technical till you hit a bump and it sends you the other direction <laughs> all right man uh well you're you got a good run going here in the b main just trying to get yourself locked into the a main uh, what do we got to do here for the next uh 13 14 laps well i just got to get another restart like i did that last time uh get a little bit of a gap between uh, me and dj there and then just maintain i hope uh, all the guys around me are smart enough to realize top 10 are in the show so we don't need to push anything here but if uh they, these guys want to get raced and i'm just going to try and make the show all right man good luck to you here the rest of the way we appreciate the time thanks guys any reaction there? Uh, I, I I love I love his perspective. I mean, I, I agree with him, you know, especially, you know, you've got guys there in the top four, five, six cars. You know, they, they, they're they comfortably in the show if they can continue to run right where they are. This, yeah, your result here doesn't matter because who cares if you start in row 11 or row 13 of the feature event? Keep the car in one piece. Keep it straight. That's what everyone's objective should be, really, in the top six, seven spots. Behind that, yeah, you got to worry about the transfer position. But if you're ahead of that, just keep yourself clean. Jamie Dyson gets a great run here off of the restart, and they are side-by-side side there for position number three. Got one car sideways coming off of turn number two, but the battle is on right now for position number three. Here comes Connor Ross working around the outside, man. He's looking like he's riding the cushion on a dirt track, and he's making it work here so far. He's got David Rockwood underneath him as now the yellow flag will come out for the fourth time here in this one. One car around, that's the... 21. Brandon Schaller. I'm going to tell you something about the mentality of a race car driver, especially a young one. Well, let's look at the replay first, and then I'll uh, I'll get into that, Stephen. All right, let's take a look. And... Oh, wow. One car. Yeah, one car really got uh, pounded into the turn two wall there, and then Schaller... Coming. Oh, got tagged in the right rear quarter. Looked like uh, the double zero of Phil Givens. Um, now, I'm not positive, but that may have even been after the yellow flag came out because there's a couple guys that got tied up uh, in the previous corner. But uh, Givens, uh, we were talking about it. You know, the front straightaway, you get into the bumps, back end comes around, and you're along for a sleigh ride at that point. But, Adam, yeah. uh, back to the point you were going to make. A couple of weeks ago, when we were racing on the Legends Oval at Charlotte, Connor Ross started on the outside of the front row, I believe for the B main. He hit the gas, got the car sideways, either took out the pole sitter or the third place car. All, all hell broke loose. And uh, and he took some ribbing for that, you know, for, for losing control of his car. When I look at the way people drive, and I looked at the way he hit the wall on that last restart, but he didn't let the car bounce off of it, a lot of these guys are trying to keep better control, but you can almost see the ones who have been bitten by being over-aggressive. Guys like Connor Ross, DJ Christie is being awful careful there. Jamie Dyson has a game plan for what he wants to do and not avoid any skirmishes. And then you see some of the others who haven't quite bitten been publicly humiliated by making these driving mistakes just yet and you see some of them so it looks like uh phil givens uh being assessed an eol penalty there for the incident and i and i guess it was that incident on the front straightaway that triggered the yellow flag so that's a tough break for phil as we've got uh seven laps to go as they run right now uh lights are still on on the pace truck so we're going to be at least another lap. We're probably looking at a five-lap dash uh, to the checkered flag here in tonight's B Main. Again, tonight is round number seven of the Grisdale's Racing Products Winter Meltdown presented by Caldecott Millwright Services and London Recreational Racing. We appreciate uh, all three of our uh, sponsors for helping us put, down, or put on the winter meltdown. And, of course, it's coming to you live here on GeForce TV. I want to send a shout-out to everybody that's tuned in here on the broadcast on GeForce TV. I see we've got the comments rolling in. And, you know, that's that's been a fun part about this series, without a doubt, is the fan interaction that we've had uh, during these events. And we're looking forward to putting on a good show for you tonight here from the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, one of the newer pavement tracks that has been added 
to the iRacing uh, iRacing servers and uh, getting ready for a single file restart here. Coming to the green with five to go. I was just going to chime in with that single file restart. So the drivers in the top five will be real happy about this. Someone trying to make their way back through the field might not be quite as jazzed about it. DJ Christie tried to stay with Dyson there on the restart, but Dyson's going to take about a car length and a half into turn number one. Back under the green flag here with five laps to go, and it's Jamie Dyson, Christie, Rockwood, Ross, your top four as they go down into turns three and four. And you're right, Adam, you know, a lot of these guys that are uh, well in qualifying spots right now playing it fairly conservatively, but DJ Christie, man, you put a race car driver behind the wheel and there's a checkered flag to be had, they're going to go after it. Here comes Christie. Yeah, it cost him a little bit, though. It opened the door for David Rockwood. You've got Connor trying to figure out what to do behind him. Eric Hinks, fairly aggressive behind Connor Ross, and he's being challenged from behind for the fifth spot. Good battle up here, and, and I think some of these guys are really testing the waters to see what they've got. I mean, it is a fixed setup race, so everybody has the same setup as we ride on board here with Hanks coming to the two to go signal. Two laps to go, 1.2 miles around the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, and oh boy, look out. Little contact there between Hanks and Ross. They'll keep them moving forward, and boy, that was a close call as they're coming to the white flag this time. Smart money if you're Connor Ross is to watch Hanks go by on the inside and remember this for later in the 100 lap or if you make it through, because that's the sort of thing that, that might ruffle your feathers a little bit. Absolutely. Checkered flag coming out here. Off of turn number four, Jamie Dyson will win tonight's B main. DJ Christie, David Rockwood, Eric Hanks, Connor Ross, the top five all going to tonight's A main, and they will be joined by Cam Thompson, who started 12th, got himself up to sixth. Blair Wickett, Chris Hebert, Tom Gibbons, and rounding out your top 10 qualifiers here from the B main tonight is going to be Roland Croteau in car number 98. So there you go. And we hadn't really talked about Roland. He started in 15. Yeah, good for Croteau to get into the field. This is going to be a lot of fun, 100 laps. You saw the handling on these cars going away after 25 laps, half of which were run under caution. So this is going to be a good one. That it is. And we're getting ready to get them lined up here for tonight's 100 lap A main. We want to welcome everybody. If you're just joined to join us, I see we've just joined or uh, gathered a few more viewers here on GeForce TV. We're just uh, eclipsing triple digits. So do me a favor if you're tuning in here to the broadcast and uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for us if you appreciate and enjoy the coverage that we're providing to you here tonight on GeForce TV as we get ready to show you tonight's Grisdale's Racing Products starting lineup. Joe Lawrence. Aboard car number 78 is going to start us off to the green flag from the pole tonight. He's going to start alongside the 24, Kyle Steckley. Aboard car number 24, row two to the inside is going to be your points leader, Dale Shaw. Aboard car number 83 and starting to his outside, the Scooch Phone Case is number 81. That's Gareth Gonder. Dustin Momberkett, Alex McCollum will start in or row number three. Tyler DiVenenzo who's got the lowest amount of incident points per lap uh, this season. Aboard car number 97 will start in seventh. He'll start alongside Cole Quinton in the 151. And row 10 will be Connor James tonight aboard car number four. And Wally Wilson aboard car number 69, who's one of the drivers who's uh, picked off the most spots uh, in our hard charger competition when we get a yellow flag here tonight. We're going to show you uh, some of the top runners in not only uh, series points, but also in those hard charger standings. So you'll see the rest of the starting lineup. Scroll through your screen here as we get ready to go for 100 laps here at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Adam, uh, any last second thoughts before we get ready for the green? So we will get ready to go to the green. We have a couple of drivers that are going to the back of the field. Uh, I believe those are all penalties uh, being served from uh, the previous race last week uh, at Five Flags Speedway. 
Dustin Mombergat, Connor James, Alex McCollum, all serving end of line penalties here before we go racing in tonight's 100 lapper. Sorry, I, I don't know if I came through there or not when you asked me about what we can expect tonight. No, I, I did miss that. Uh, so yeah, any any last <laughs> second thoughts here? Just, Lights are off on the pace truck. Hang on tight. It's going to be a bumpy ride, Stephen. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes here. Lights are off on the iRacing Chevy Silverado pace truck. Joe Lawrence, Kyle Steckley. Round number seven of the Grisdale Racing Products Winter Meltdown gets the green here at the Nashville Fairground Speedway. Green flag is in the air. And it's going to be Lawrence who will dive down to the inside. He will take the lead off of turn number two. Shaw there in third, but he, Steckley trying to hold on, but Steckley opened up the door. And here comes your points leader, Dale Shaw, trying to fill the void down on the inside. And we've got yellow here. Caution lights are on. First caution of the night comes out on lap number one. We've got four or five cars tied up there in turn number four. Roland Croto, one of the drivers involved, Connor Ross. I don't know that Connor got any damage there. I think he was able to bring it to a stop before the incident, uh, before making contact, but they had the track blocked up pretty good there in turn number four. One of the skills you have to have to be successful in this series, Stephen, is, is the ability to get into an accident without tearing up the race car because there's not many drivers who wind up unscathed at the end of our events. Let's take a look here at the instant replay, and we're going to be watching DJ Christie in the five as they go down the back straightaway, and everybody had really kind of sorted themselves out, and he got a little bit of help there at Kind of looked like incidental contact there from Rockwood. They uh, kind of ran out of room there going into turn three as Christie was up high. Rockwood was there uh, to the low side, maybe in the middle. And like we said, a couple of cars uh, able to get it woed up before making contact there. So shouldn't see too many cars on pit road there for damage. No, I wouldn't think so. Good heads up driving by most of the drivers in that vicinity. And I really think, Stephen, if you're not one of the top five drivers out here, what you want to do is find a little pocket where you can run your own laps, not be in a crowd, and just try to click off laps so you get to about lap 60 or so, and then you can think about start making some moves. I think it's I think it's going to be interesting to see here because, like you said, Ed, I think there will be some drivers that you know, you're going to have drivers on both ends of that spectrum, and, and it'll be interesting to see which ones, you know, because you, you've got drivers that, actually, let's take a look here at the hard charger points uh, while we've got an opportunity here, and uh, man, Colton Everingham has uh, really uh, done a lot of work here in the first six races of the series. Uh, Adam, he's leading our hard charger points coming into tonight. Yeah, he is leading the hard charger points for sure. Those numbers, I don't think, are what we had. I'm going to have a look at the, the document right now. Colton Everingham, Wally Wilson, David Rockwood, Jamie Dyson, Kyle Steckley. And uh, when we're talking hard charger standings, these are the drivers that have uh, passed the uh, most amount of cars over the six race yeah. So, far. so Colton is in the lead of the standings with 67 spots gained. Second place has 35 spots gained. So Colton can take the rest of the year off if he chooses. <laughs> what what I like to bug him about a little bit is that uh, he needs to pick up his qualifying gear. Because clearly he's qualifying at the back and finishing at the front. That's definitely a takeaway there for sure. No doubt. So we are getting them stacked back up here for the restart. Lights are off on the iRacing pace truck. Getting ready to bring us back to the green flag. When they come across the line, they'll put lap eight in the books. It's going to be Joe Lawrence and Kyle Steckley on the front row one more time. Dale Shaw, Gareth Gonder back to the green flag. Green flag is back out here at the Nashville Fairground Speedway as they will sort themselves out into turns one and two. Steckley was able to get himself 
down to the inside very quickly. Got a little bit of kick of a kick in the keister there from Dale Shaw in one and two, and it didn't affect him in one and two, but it's now opened up the door for Shaw just a little bit here coming down the front straightaway into turn number one. But you can see just how much Shaw's car was getting uh, out of shape there, trying to go through the bumps. This is not a very smooth racetrack, and it's going to be giving these guys fits all night long. Right now, riding on board with Gareth Gonder in the 81 as he takes a look here at the battle for position number two, and he's got company underneath him as well. As they've got a battle for second, we've got a battle for fourth. Tyler DiVenenza, oh, now they're three wide. Steckley way out of the racing groove in three and four. And look at DiVenenzo, he goes by Gonder, and now he'll try and go by Steckley for second. Meanwhile, Dale Shaw putting the pressure on Joe Lawrence here for the top spot. What a battle up front. As you saw, Steckley had a little bit of a connection issue there in turns three and four. Meanwhile, turn our attention back to the front. Dale Shaw trying to work the inside lane. You see the car get a little upset there, entering turn number one. And he is going after the Pennzoil sponsored 78 of Joe Lawrence. Joe Lawrence, who's definitely got a lot of fans watching here tonight on GeForce TV, he always does. And it, uh, Dale Shaw's not, not lacking for fans at all uh, either. Uh, and here he is going after the race lead. Great look at the front end of Dale Shaw and almost a little kiss there in the corner. We went away from that look just before you saw if he actually punted uh, Joe Lawrence a little bit there, if he backed off. And just as Shaw was making a move for the race lead, caution lights come on. As Jamie Dyson, your B main winner, sideways over in turns one and two, he'll be able to drive away. Does not look like he has a whole lot of damage there on the 11, so he will be able to continue on. Let's take a look at the replay here. Dyson working the outside lane. And let's watch as he comes down the front stretch and into one and two. Let's see what happened. Oh, one car got around in uh, front of them. And then contact from the 31 while they were trying to avoid the 04 of Cam Thompson. Thompson, another car that transferred out of tonight's team to get into tonight's starting field. Let's take a look and see what happened to Thompson. We're gonna pick him up here coming off of turn number four, and let's see what happened. Oh, wow. Caught the wall in a, in a big way there on the front straightaway. He climbed yeah, that, right up on top of the concrete. Oh, no kidding. That just spit the car up and out. It did. That was wild. So Joe Lawrence scored as your race leader here. He's led every lap since the drop of the green here tonight. But just before that yellow flag, Dale Shaw was uh, trying to get a look. And it seems as though Shaw has been able to figure out the exits of the corner, the exit of turn two, the exit of turn four. And, you know, I don't know if it's something that he's able to do in the center of the corner, Adam, to kind of, set you up for the exit of the corner, but Shaw's definitely got that part figured out tonight. Yeah, he seems to have found a couple of things, but that move is not going to work if you have a competitor right behind you. That's only going to work if you've got a car length or two advantage over the next car behind you. And well, the reason I say that, to make that move, he's got to enter the corner a little bit higher or let the car drift up a little bit in the center to carve down the racetrack. You give these guys half an opening, they're going to jump at it. So the field will get themselves stacked up two by two. Double file restart here coming this time by. Joe Lawrence, Dale Shaw, Kyle Steckley, Tyler DiVenenzo, Gareth Gonder, your top five as we get ready to bring them back to the green. Just shy of 20 laps in the race distance here tonight. And Joe Lawrence very early on the gas, setting a quick pace here. Coming off of turn number four, green lights are back on. Tyler DiVenenzo up on the high lane and he's gonna drive around the 24 of Steckley to take over third. 
Look out, one car hard into the inside wall on the back yeah. straightaway, but I think that car kept it straight, and we will stay green. Yeah, it looked like Josh Stoddy in the 17, and there he was making a little bit of contact with DJ Christie coming off of turn number four, so he managed to save it and not lose an awful lot of positions out there. We'll see how much damage he's got. That is the one thing of, about a, a tight racetrack like this one, Adam, is you know you can make contact with the wall and if you hit it square you know a lot of times you'll bounce off and you keep on trucking that's exactly what he did there we'll pick up the battle here and this looks like a battle for position number seven and eight that's uh ryan dyson in the 28 working on cole quinton in the 51. they'll go side by side just behind them ray morno in the 03 Good battle here going to turn number three with uh, a, a few veteran drivers here putting on a good show for us tonight. Yeah, if we can keep this green for a little while, I love what these race cars are doing, right? The drivers that are starting to lose the handle a little bit are being challenged by drivers who, who've conserved a little bit. As I said, that Ryan Dyson and Cole Quinton make a little bit of contact. That allows Ray Morneau Jr. to slide through. Here comes Garrett Teamersma in the 17 way freight machine looking to take advantage as well. 24 laps in the books right now, Adam. What's, uh, you know, you're one of these guys here. Uh, let's put you behind the wheel for a second. You're one of these guys here on the back half of the top 10. Are, are we just looking for a comfortable spot to race right now and, and log some laps here? That's all I'm hoping to do. You know, maybe if I'm getting real calculated, I want to make sure I'm running in an odd position to have the inside if a restart comes about. But for the most part, I just want to run by myself. I don't want to challenge anyone too hard. I don't want to be challenged too hard. The drivers that I think are the most successful, and, and we're riding with one right now, Mike Husby. We're not going to talk about him an awful lot this race, but as the race wears on, he, he kind of races quietly. He just does his thing out there. That's the driver who's going to be successful tonight is one who doesn't make headlines in the first 50 or 60 laps. And you can see Husby really taking care of his stuff there, Adam. He's not, you know, he's not making a big arc into the corner. He's not trying to make maximum speed. He's trying to take care of his stuff right now and doing a pretty good job of doing it. And he's got one of the best right behind him in the 93, Alex McCollum, fill-in driver extraordinaire, driving for Carson Nagy tonight in that white number 93. That's one I would watch all night long because he comes with a strategy, and, and he's one that you're going to see later on in the race. Still has a lot of race car to work with. 28 laps in the books as they run right now, and Dale Shaw has made a move to take over the top spot. Shaw to the leader are to the top of the leaderboard here aboard car number 83 your points leader coming into tonight and that leaves us with a battle here for second as joe lawrence trying to fend off tyler divinenzo i think divinenzo is just a little bit quicker but you can be quicker but you got to find a way to get by and uh get by uh cleanly here through the corner and that's what divinenzo is working on right now yeah, and Joe Lawrence is, is a pretty savvy race car driver as well, but from most of what I saw from him uh, last year racing, he loves to be out in front. So I'm not sure how much he's digging this second place watching Dale Shaw drive away. And I mean, Shaw is only faster by a few hundredths of a second. But you got to think Joe doesn't want all this pressure from behind. So do you pick up the pace as we are under yellow? You know, do you pick up the pace a little bit to try to shake them or do you keep running your own race? Caution lights are on. Chris Hebert uh, got involved in this one aboard the 31. Thought he was going to head pit side there for a moment and then uh, last second decided to stay on the racetrack. Maybe doesn't have quite as much damage as what he thought. Let's see what happened here on the GeForce TV replay. And they are going down into turn one, three wide there. And, oh, good bit of contact there from the 42 as he was headed nose first toward the wall. So there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be some good amount of damage there. Blair Wicket was the 42, got collected up into that one. Yeah, Blair Wicket, wrong place at the wrong time. He comes up and shows a little bit of displeasure with Chris Hebert, but not too many people spin out on purpose, right? That's why they call them accidents. <laughs> Absolutely. So right now, 33 in. 
And Dale Shaw taking over the race lead. Let's uh, see if we can dial up. Uh, before we do that, we'll show you the points here. Uh, right now, your top 10 in points coming into tonight. And if if you're just tuned in for the first time tonight here on this series, here with the Grisdale Racing Products Winter Meltdown Series, uh, the points are kept uh, like a golf score. You want the low score. Uh, if you win a race, you get one point. If you finish second, you get two points. And here's our championship points coming into the night. The low score is 47, and that's Dale Shaw. That's uh, your points leader right now. Uh, three points ahead of Tyler DiVenenzo in the 97, and both of those cars running in the top three right now. Matter of fact, uh, four of your top four cars, all four of them, are right now running in the top five. Gareth Gonder, second in the standings. Kyle Steckley running in fourth. Blake Neer, who I don't see in the field here tonight, currently uh, shown four, or a fifth in our standings. Uh, Lawrence, Everingham, House, James, and McPherson rounding out the top 10 here in series points. So what we did for Charlotte, which was basically an all-star race halfway through, everyone who raced got 10 points. Anyone who didn't show up for that race got 20 points. So what we're looking at is an average finish of about seventh place puts you in the lead of these point standings. That shows you how treacherous this racing is and how hard it is to be at the front each and every week. Absolutely. And how many times have we seen it this season where drivers can work their way to the front of the field and, you know, only to have it go haywire in the final five, ten laps. So we'll see how this one shakes out tonight. I'll tell you, though, the, the top five cars have, have really been the dominant cars in the field. And it feels a little weird to say that, Adam, because it is a fixed setup race. Everybody's on the same thing. But, you know, the top five guys right now, they've really been... Uh, the class of the field here so far. You know, it brings up the old question about racing. Is it the driver that goes the fastest or the driver that can control their car the best? You know, it's, it's a calculated kind of speed as we're back under yellow once again. So back under the yellow flag here on lap number 39. And why don't we take this opportunity here under the yellow to get a couple words in from some of our great uh, supporting uh, cast here with the Grisdale Racing Products Winter Meltdown. We'll step aside when we come back. We'll bring you more live racing here from the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. You're watching the Winter Meltdown here on GeForce TV. What makes a trailer a miska? Is it the heavy duty Canadian steel they are made from? Or is it the exceptional finish that will last year after year? How about knowing that these are the best back trailers in the industry? These are the reasons you buy Miska. So what makes these trailers Miska? It's the hard work and Canadians who craft them. We are Miska. We are Canadian Pup. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Ribs. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. A guy like this who relies on his truck for work knows that his truck will take care of him if he takes care of his truck. And WeatherTech has always been the ultimate protection. From floor liners to no drill mud flaps to tech liner for your truck bed to bump step to the handy underseat storage system. And Cup Phone keeps phones secure in any cup holder. Order your ultimate protection today at weathertech.ca. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Sausages and Street Dogs. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Penty's Man Cave. Welcome back to the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Round number seven of the Grisdale Racing Products Winter Meltdown, presented by Call the Cop Millwright Services and London Recreational Racing. We're live racing with the super late models here on GeForce TV. Steve Ovens, Adam Ross with the coverage here tonight. Matt Thomas working in the FLX Media Group video booth for us tonight. And 
getting everything sent out to GeForce TV for us tonight. We appreciate you joining us here on the coverage. And Adam, we're starting to close up. Uh, we're 42, now 43 laps in. Uh, thoughts as we get ready to uh, hit the halfway mark here before too long? Well, I think what we're going to see is some drivers, and, and I'm going to pick on Alex McCollum. I think Connor James might be hanging back just a little bit. And you're going to see these drivers probably in about 20 laps start to make their move. And then we're going to see how much conservation there was, how, how these guys did from about third place on back, second place on back. How much did they save of their race cars and how, how hard are they going to fade? One driver making moves up through the field has been Ryan Dyson, who started 12th, will restart 6th here as we take the green flag, and he's immediately going after Gareth Gonder to try and crack into the top five here. Dale Shaw breaks away from the rest of the pack as we go back under the green flag. Meanwhile, we've got a great battle here from third on back, and look at this battle here. You talked about him, Alex McCollum, uh, Adam, right now trying to get up. Uh, he's already into the top 10 and trying to work his way even further forward. It, it's sort of the low-hanging fruit because Dyson's hung up on the outside. Don't push the car too hard, but just run the bottom. Don't let him get back down there. McCollum, we haven't seen that car step out at all tonight. So there he goes, picks up one more spot. And again, doesn't work it too hard. Ray Morno, as I say that, Ray Morno makes a bit of a mistake, slides up the racetrack. Contact between McCollum and Morno, and here comes Connor James. Wow, Ray Morno, save of the night so far as we're three laps shy of hitting the halfway mark and Morneau absolutely putting on a show and saved the race car right there as he's going to now battle with Dyson and the rest of the crew there. But McCollum works his way into six, not yet into the top five, but another driver now uh, there with Morneau. Excuse me, that was Connor James in the four. Here comes James to the inside, and he'll pick off a spot on Morneau. Yeah, James let that car slide up a little bit. Ray Moore, no. I don't know if he backed out of the throttle or was just a little bit slower through the turn, but that avoided contact. Now Dyson's going to make the move. Brody McPherson right behind him. So if you're Ray Moore, no, do you fight hard as you're just coming up on the halfway point? Or do you let off and try to find a spot to slide into line? As I say that, looks like he might make the pass on Dyson. Checking back in with your race leaders as they come across the line for the halfway mark. 50 laps in, 50 to go. Your current race leader is Dale Shaw, but he is starting to get pressure at him. Your top two cars have broken away from the rest of the pack, and Joe Lawrence now trying to apply the pressure. Lawrence right now settles into the two spot as they will work their way into one and two. Meanwhile, back here, a battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. There's Gonder in the 81. Divinenzo in the 97, and McCollum trying to break into the top five for the first time tonight. And Adam, you were you were dead on with your take there. McCollum's car, man, that car doesn't twitch. It doesn't move. Very, very smooth on the wheel right now. The one thing with the iRacing simulation is when you slide the car, when you get it loose, when you have a push, it heats up the, the right side tires and you lose performance. So if you can keep the car under you, that's going to be pay you back later on in the race. Riding on board here, and, and I'll step aside here. Let's ride on board with McCollum. And something that Adam talked about before the race started, let's listen into the audio as they work that throttle pedal. Boy, Adam, that is so smooth so smooth on the gas and, and and you're not nearly as hard on the gas as you are in a lot of the oval tracks we run it like it's a slow progression up to full throttle so McCollum working on Gareth Gonder there in the 81 Steckley who's uh, really kind of set himself up in a nice spot there in third just ahead of these guys He's got a few car lengths out in front of him, got a few car lengths out behind him, but he's uh, pretty comfortable in position number three, just trying to make sure he's there at the end of this one. 56 in, 44 to go, and boy, man, Adam, Ray Warno has just been stuck on the outside lane. He has just been getting picked on as the freight train is lined up underneath him. 
that all they have to do behind them, you don't have to push it, just make sure you get to the front bumper or the back bumper ahead of you before Ray Morneau can get down. So it's kind of a slow march back and Morneau looks like he might finally get down in line. I believe that's Wally Wilson he's racing with. A new skin on the car for Wally Wilson this week if it is him. Man, I'm, I'm so impressed, Adam. I've seen, I can't tell you how many times that laps in a row, you see a car that'll just barely catch the outside wall coming off the corner. They have just enough room on the straightaways to gather it back up and keep on moving like nothing ever happened. I mean, these guys are all over the wheel right now. We ride on board with Wally Wilson, driver with many race cars. Wally from Owen Sound, Ontario, right behind Ray Morneau from Windsor, Ontario. So Wilson there now falls about a half a car length behind Morneau. As back up toward the front, we've got Dale Shaw, who's put some distance on Joe Lawrence for the race lead. Uh, half a second now is the advantage from Shaw back to Lawrence. Steckley is now starting to close up on Lawrence just a little bit to uh, try and make this a good battle for the second spot. Lawrence catches the wall just a little bit, throws some sparks up, and we've got one car sideways in the corner there, down on the apron of the racetrack, and now the yellow flag will come out, and that is yeah. the 98. Roland that is Proto. Proto, yep. One of our B main qualifiers, and he was uh, sitting in a scary spot there in turn number three. Caution lights coming on. We're now past uh, lap 60, less than 40 to go. And let's see what happened to Croto here going into turns. We'll pick him up here in one and two, and then I believe his infinite will be down here into turn three. Oh. Nose first into the fence there and then came to rest where you saw him there in turn number three was racing alongside the 31. Yeah, Chris Hebert in the 31, and then they got together again on the back straightaway. And Croto just went for the long slide, and then... <laughs> wow, that was close. He grabbed reverse just in the nick of time. And, you know, Croto... He got himself into the A main tonight, Adam, but it's not been a night to write home about for Croto. He's, he's uh, got a little damage on that car before that incident took place. So he'll try and uh, get some repairs made and get it back out here and uh, turn some more competitive laps. As, wow, we see the 93 of McCollum on pit lane. I Strategy, Adam? Wow. We're, we're going to find out. I was just going to say, if, if McCollum came to the pits and I'm behind him, I'm going to the pits too. Yeah. Well, it sure seems that uh, the top... So let's take a look. It looks like Kyle Steckley, Joe Lawrence came down pit road as well. Tyler DiVenenzo, Connor James. So it's really going to shake up the running order. So this looks like the 17 of uh, uh, the, the 03. So there's probably about seven or eight cars, Adam, that chose not to pit here. Um, it's not really a surprise to me to see that Dale Shaw stayed out as the race leader. But now we're starting to see names in the top five that we haven't been able to mention, you know, before this. You've got Dustin Momberkett, third, Brody McPherson, fourth. And Colton Everingham, who started 19th, has picked off 14 spots. Your uh, hard charger points leader right now, rounding out the top five. Yeah, no surprise. Colton Everingham always finishes better than he starts, but this restart's going to be a wild one. I look for the exit of turn two to tell a big tale. That's where you're going to see the rubber show. Well, let's see how it works out here. I... I I like uh, Shaw's position as the race leader, but you know the question's gonna be, how quickly will those tires work their way up through the pack? Green lights are on, as we've got 33 laps to go. The question remains. Oh, and we've got an incident. I think Steven Enzo's one of them. 
in the 97. Caution, lights are on. Connor James is involved. And the 97 of DiVinenzo and Adam, that's a risk you take coming into the pits uh, when you've got, you know, a, a lot of cars that chose not to pit. You know, that's a risk you take going uh, into the back of the pack. It really is. Let's have another look here. Matt's going to cue this up. So Steven Enzo involved, Connor James involved. Let's see where it starts. Is James right behind Kyle Steckley coming to the restart? It looked like Joe Lawrence had to check up for something in front of him, and it, it just got the whole field behind them kind of uh, backed up their chain reaction. Definitely not something, if you're a driver out here with those fresh tires, you know, running some laps under yellow here is not what you want to see. Dale Shaw's not that uh, upset about it. And let's take a look here. Yeah, you saw Shaw checked up a bit. DiVinenzo had a huge run coming into turn number one. And then he got a little help from behind as well as everybody started stacking up there into turn one. The big thing is, Stephen, this is not different than any other kind of racing that our fans will watch. There are always drivers, and some people want to say, oh, they're so lucky at getting through wrecks. No, they're not. They're just really, really good at being aware of, of what's all around them, right? Like, how often do you see, if, if we're talking dirt modifies where you come from, how often do you see Gary Tompkins pile into a wreck? If yeah. we're talking about late models up here, how often do we see a Brandon Watson or a Dale Shaw drive into a wreck? There's just a different, uh, they process things differently and they look much, much farther ahead than most. Absolutely. Talking about Dale Shaw, let's uh, let's check in with Dale Shaw as he is your race He's leader. Good. Dale, this is uh, Steve Ovens up in the announcer's booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you guys. How's it going? Oh, well, we're doing good. It seems like you're doing pretty well tonight, leading this race here with less than 30 to go. Um, some guys are going to try to charge from the back on tires. What's your thoughts here? Just keep hitting my marks and save the right front tire. We're uh, we're buzzing right front tires off. This place is really abrasive on tires. So uh, tires can be big. If they can get up here, they're going to pass us like we're sitting still. So early on in the race tonight, you and Joe Lawrence putting on a good battle there. Um, Looks like, uh, you know, if he can get back up, that, that might be a good challenge here late in the race. Uh, I, I kind of missed the last part of that. But, yeah, it was good hard racing with Joe. I uh, I got under him a couple times, and he just didn't give me the lane. So uh, I just kind of stuck my nose in there. So, All right, man. Good luck to you here the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Dale Shaw, the, the inaugural APC late model champion from years ago. We're going to go back to green. Double file restart, Dustin Mumberkett on the outside of row number one. Green lights are back on, and Shaw gets a great restart here coming to the green. He'll lead him into one. Mumberkett tucks into line. Gareth Gonder there in the Scooch 81. He'll slide up into the, the uh, third spot, and we've got one car in trouble. And I think it was Joe Lawrence in the 78. Or at least it looked, oh, well, maybe it was uh, Lawrence. It had that look of a yellow car, and I, I thought I saw Stoddy make it through, DJ Christie make it through. I think he's the only other yellow car out there, unless he did a 360 and kept it going, but I'm sure we will be able to have another look at it. It was coming off of turn number two. Yeah, it, it certainly had the appearance. Uh, Let's take a look here at the restart. It was coming off of turn number two. One car just darted down to the inside wall. And, oh, Ray Morneau in the 03. Oh, I had my, had my yellows confused with my oranges. Mike Husby yeah. got a piece. Connor Ross just squeaked by. Yeah, yeah yellowy orange, similar. We're, we're on the same palette anyway. <laughs> oh, man, tough break there for Morneau, who... You know, he, uh, man, mid-race there, it just seemed like he couldn't get off the top side of the racetrack. And so uh, a challenging night uh, made a little bit more challenging. He's going to bring it down the pit lane and put some fresh rubber on that car for the last 25-lap dash here 
to the checkered and I, I like that move there. You know, you 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 know you're going to start in the back already. So why uh, why not come down and uh, put some fresh tires and see what we can do with it? So taking a look here at the running order, and I'm trying to take a look. It's either Josh Stoddy or uh, Kyle Steckley that are the first cars on fresh tires coming up through the pack uh, from that uh, pit stop just uh, with about 35, 40 laps to go. So those, uh, those are going to be the cars to keep an eye on here. They're going to restart 8th and ninth when we get back to the green, and we're going to have just over 20 laps left remaining. I still think, though, taking care of that right front tire, I think Shaw, Mombercat, and Gareth Gonder are sitting in a great spot right now, running top three. At, you know, Even if the fresh tires are able to make it through traffic, there's still a decent amount of traffic that they need to get through before they can get into those top three spots. So this, this ought to be a good one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Dale Shaw said it. If, if they get there, they they might make easy work of them, but that's a lot of cars to get through. And everybody who qualifies for our races, I mean, you've got to be pretty darn good to get into the show. So every car has speed. The the one thing that I will say, though, is, is I just took a look and unfortunately it looks like Kyle Steckley uh, getting an EOL penalty going to have to restart from the tail here of this one but adam i think you know we're talking about the drivers that have fresh tires and the ones that don't you know the the one thing i think we have to keep in mind as well is we really haven't had a long green flag run for these guys with fresh tires you know i don't think a one two lap run is really enough to see what they can do no no, it's really not. They need to be able to get a rhythm going. They need to be able to get out there and, uh, and, and run some laps. It's The place is treacherous, so you've got to remember, all these drivers are trained not to jump on the throttle. Well, now they kind of have to get on the throttle harder, but they're still going to be fairly hesitant because of the track conditions, even though they have fresher tires. So the lights are off on the pace truck. Field will get ready to get them lined up here. Chris Hebert uh, in the uh, going to be serving an EOL penalty on his own as well. So he's going to have to go to the tail here for the restart. And it's going to be a single file restart here. We've had a couple of cautions on cautions here, slowing the pace down. So we are going to do a single file restart here, Adam, trying to get some laps on the board. And it's going to be Dale Shaw who picks up the throttle just before turn number four. Green lights are back on. We've got 20 laps to go here at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Mombercat in two, Gonder three. And now here's the battle from fourth on back. The 56 there is McPherson. We haven't talked an awful lot about Jordan House, young man of that number eight machine running in the top five right now. So let's see if he can put a move on and make his way towards the front as well. There's a lot of drivers out here working their way through the field. And there's a lot of drivers who have endured a top 80 laps to be in the top 10. They don't want to give up their spots. No, not at all. And Colton Everingham doing everything he can to try to get by Jordan House there for position. He's got DJ Christie with him. And now here come the cards with fresh tires, led by Joe Lawrence, Alex McCollum, and Josh Stoddy in the 17th. These guys, and you know, we're starting to uh, click laps off here. 18 laps to go, now 17 to go as we cross the line. And uh, these guys are gonna have a, a tough road to hoe here with 17 to go. They have really got to start picking off some positions. Yeah, it's time for them to, to move. And McCollum looking to the outside of Joe Lawrence. Joe Lawrence making it difficult for McCollum to get by. He's gonna have a look to the inside of DJ Christie down into turn one. Yeah, I was going to say Joe Lawrence has got to go to the whip here because McCollum, you know, here's the here's the deal. McCollum doesn't have a lot of time to be patient here. You know, he, he wants to make a clean move, but I think McCollum might be just a tick quicker right now. But uh, you got to find a way by, and that's the challenge for him right now. They're starting to pull up on Everingham in the 48. I'll say this for Alex McCollum. He's one of the elite racers in iRacing. He's come in here as a fill-in driver, but he's shown a lot of respect. He races hard, but he hasn't been over-aggressive and 
we've got a wreck on the front straightaway. Alex McCollum has been a lot of fun to watch race out here as Tyler DiVenenzo is having a tough night. Remember what we said earlier about being in the lead of the points. You need an average finish of about seventh or so. Tyler yeah. DiVenenzo is going to have his work cut out for him. Man, ever since that pit stop, the night has just gone south for DiVenenzo. Let's take a look here. I think racing there with Stadi in the 17. And a little bit. And then and then DiVenenzo checked up a little bit. Got a little help from behind as well. So both of those guys getting a little yeah. bit of tough luck there. Yeah, no fault to Johnny Morrison in the 86. Yeah. They're, they're all racing, trying to get everything that they can. So someone checks up like that. It doesn't take a lot of contact to upset the car and turn it around but boy oh boy every time we get these yellow flags the sprint to the finish gets a little bit shorter it absolutely does and you know i, I i'm kind of i'm kind of wondering here you know has dustin Mombercat really shown us everything he has i mean maybe he's been taking care of stuff here toward the end of this race that'll be interesting to see gonder's been been he gonder's been like novocaine tonight adam he has just been solid consistent you know, steady right there the whole time, all night long tonight. He's been in the top three to five spots here throughout the course of this race. We're hearing from Matt Thomas. Fresh tires are up in the seventh spot. So basically, once we go back to green, they got to pass a car a lap. And that is hard to do. It absolutely is. That's going to be the question. And I guess we'll we'll throw it out uh, to the viewers here on GeForce TV. Uh, who do you think is going to come home with the win in this one? Shaw's been tough here, uh, you know, for the for the better portion of this night. We've got Mombercat, you've got Gareth Gonder in third, fourth is Brody McPherson. He's uh, in a great spot in the point standings coming into tonight, having a good points night. Jordan House, we just mentioned him a little while ago, started 17th. He's up to fifth. Colton Everingham, no surprise, 19th to 6th here so far. But your pole sitter, Joe Lawrence, right now in position number 7. So if you're watching here on GeForce TV, throw us a comment. Let us know who you're pulling for here with 10 to go. We're probably going to get a restart with about 8 laps to go. And if I'm playing Larry McReynolds here and we're going to talk trends, Stephen, I'm going to say the trend is one or two of these drivers that are in the top 10 mind in their own business are not going to finish in the top 10. That has, that has been a trend. <laughs> that has been a trend for sure. So I think they will get the one to go signal this time off of four. And, you know, I've been impressed with Shaw tonight, man. He's just been kept a, kept a cool head about everything. Uh, but this is going to get interesting, Adam. A restart next time by with eight to go. And it is double file here. And this is going to be very interesting. And, it, and if, you're, if you're Joe Lawrence, if you're Alex McCollum, you're loving the double file restart here. Yeah, if I'm Dale Shaw, I might even be loving the double file restart because there's far more chance of a wreck if you restart double file. And Dale Shaw is going to be ahead of it. Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. All right, iRacing pace truck pulls off of the racetrack. Coming down to the line for eight laps to go. Dale Shaw, your race leader. Green lights are back on. And here comes McPherson to the top of Gonder in the 81. That's a battle for third. And McPherson with a little bit of a washout there in turn number two. Lost the handle of the race car a little bit. And here comes Jordan House. And oh, look out McCollum. McCollum's around in the 93. Yellow flag is out. And the run, oh, we've got a big mess here on the front straightaway. Dyson's on his lid. DJ Christie is turned around backwards. Oh, poor Ryan Dyson. Oh, had a good run going tonight. And, and that incident kind of carried over from three and four. Let's take a look. Focus on the all white number 93 as he comes down the back straightaway. It's going to happen in turn four. So Garrett Teamersman, the 17, was involved, but I mean, he had two, three cars behind him pushing him. Yeah. No, nobody was lifting at that point. No, no, and that, that's what I saw initially there too, was 
you know, teamers washed up the racetrack, but I, I don't think it was, I don't think that was the part of his plan going into that corner. He, he uh, you know, ev everybody's jostling for position here. There's less than 10 to go. You know, there's going to be a whole lot more take than there is give right now compared to, say, oh, lap 10, lap 15. Well, we said it was coming. There's cars that were going to disappear from that top 10. Dale Shaw with a good restart. I was real impressed as well with Dustin Mombourquette's restart to secure second place. It's not easy to start on the outside pole of these events and maintain that position. So good job by both drivers on the front row. And I see uh, McCollum uh, typing into the chat uh, to another driver and I think uh, I think there was an apology come across, but you know Alex said, "Hey, man, that's racing," and I, and I like seeing that. I really like seeing that. You know, drivers understanding that you know things like that are going to happen uh, when we get down toward the end here. So that's that's awesome. You, you like to see that. The the great thing about racing, Stephen, is you can do everything right and be the fastest and still not win. It, oh, yeah. It's it's such a humbling sport. And uh, good things happen, bad things happen. How about Justin Collison in the 13? He was a lap down at the first yellow of this race, and he's up there in the eighth spot. Yeah, he's put together a, a good run after being a lap down. Uh, just behind him, you've got Connor James in the four. We saw him tied up in a little bit of a mess here not too long ago. He's already rallied back to ninth. Teamers are going to restart in 10th. So right now your top five cars as we get them doubled up here is Shaw, Momberkett, Gonder, McPherson, and Jordan House. Uh, Joe Lawrence will restart now on the outside lane. And again, he's the first car with fresh tires after a round of pit stops with about 35 laps to go. But as we've seen, time is certainly running short here on a short six tenths of a mile. Nashville Fairground Speedway. Green flag is back out. It's going to be a three lap dash to the finish. Here for Dale Shaw. Can he hold on? Shaw will lead Bomberkett and Gonder down the back straightaway. Another great restart for Dale Shaw. Another good job by Dustin Bomberkett to secure that second spot. Gonder up to third. McPherson did not get the restart he did last time, but he's holding back Joe Lawrence. Contact. Oh, Lawrence and uh, House made contact. There's Colton Everingham. They got a little bit of contact, and now we're going to stack them up. Oh, the whole track is blocked on the back straightaway. Two cars are upside down. DJ Christie's on his roof, and one more car on his roof. That might be Wally Wilson. Oh, man. The announcer's curse. We gave it to Justin Collison in that London Recreational Racing number 13. He was doing a great job. DJ Christie backing <laughs> that car down into three and four. He'll gra grab a gear and take off and get ready for overtime. I thought we were seeing a little days of thunder there for a second as uh, Christie gets her turned back around. And oh man, what a what a tough break there for Lawrence and a couple of guys got together there as they saw Lawrence was out of shape to the high side. And you know we've said it a few times tonight, and that's another great example. You know. You know, everybody trying to mind their P's and Q's, and in doing so, you know, sometimes things like that are going to happen as uh, Teamersma and the 13, uh, Collison, uh, got together. Yeah, and I think they were trying to, to create space yeah. because of the trouble Joe Lawrence was having up ahead. So two drivers who were, I think, kind of trying to be courteous and still be fast wound up getting together and, and did not have a happy ending. Isn't that the damnedest thing? I, I That happens to me all the time on iRacing. You know, you, you try to, you know, you try to make a maneuver to, you know, limit the carnage or, or, you know, not make it quite as bad. And then, you know, no matter what you do, it's just not going to work out in your favor. As uh, Christy ended up landing on the rear deck lid of Dyson in the eleven. Let's take one more look here. And you saw Lawrence got out to the outside. Teamers most trying to keep it on the low side as best he could, but contact there with Collison. Two cars getting upside down. I respect Husby's commitment to just staying in the gas. <laughs> yes. 
yes. And then, and then Christy with the getting her whipped back around. All right, so Adam, that is going to set us up for a green-white checkered finish. It's going to be, we're already uh, into overtime here as uh, we will have up to three attempts at a green-white checkered finish. And if you're uh, new to our broadcast here or if, uh, if you haven't seen our green-white checkered finish in a while, the way it works is they'll take the green. And uh, once they take the white flag, the next flag, uh, uh, where, excuse me, I should say, once they take the white flag, they race it back to the checkered flag. Um, if they get a yellow before that white flag comes out, we'll throw the caution, we'll rack them back up, and we'll try it again. And we try it up to three times here. And uh, it'll be interesting. Here, here's another poll question here for the viewers on GeForce TV. Uh, we've got overtime coming up. First attempt at a green-white checkered. Is it going to be one, two, or three attempts at a green-white checkered? Let's see what you think as we rack them up here and get ready to come back to green. Adam, how about for you? I think it's going to be two. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say not one for sure. I'll go with three just because you took two. Here we go. All right, let's see what happens. Shaw leads them in there, are wrecking hard. One car was airborne here on the front straightaway. I think that was Lockwood in the uh, 190. Or Rockwood, David yeah, Rockwood. Yeah, David, David Rockwood. <laughs> DJ Christie backing around the track once again. Chris, and both Dyson. Hey, let's do some statistics. When was the last time two brothers both ended a race upside down? Jamie Dyson and Ryan Dyson have done it today. Oh. <laughs> That's not a stat they want to be a part of. Oh, man. Well, let's take a look. Tom Gibbons in the 10, the 190. Okay, here's what I want. Can we ride on board with the 11 machine, Matt? Can you can you cue up another replay? And yeah, that was a wild ride. Hang on tight for this one. Wow. So we'll dial up the onboard here uh, with Jamie Dyson. Let's take a look. Oh, he was on pit lane. Oh, ouch. It's one never, thing to get Never let go of the wheel. No. You know, Adam, that's why they tell everybody on pit lane to always be race ready. <laughs> wow. That got wild ride. All right. Well, if you guessed that it was only going to take one green-white checkered, you, you, you're out of the running order here. We're going to have a second attempt. Wow, look at that view. And then he barrel rolls to boot. Man. If you're going to go, go big. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, man. You know, you know what's funny here? You know, we make light of these things. These guys have been at this for more than an hour. I mean, they take it seriously. Last week, there was a lot of hard feelings after that race at Five Flags Speedway. I don't think there will be a lot of hard feelings after this one. Like, to me, this is, this is a product of people racing really hard not wanting to give an inch, but, but up at the front, these drivers have driven a very, very good race. I would agree with that, and and I've seen some of that. I know the fans, it, it doesn't necessarily translate through onto the broadcast, but you know, in, in watching the drivers chat tonight, I agree 100% with you, Adam. I think there's been you know some incidents, and there's been that said, hey, man, <laughs> you know, kind of like drivers that say, well, that's Bristol. I've seen a lot of guys tonight saying, well, you know, it's Nashville. It's, it's you know, this track's six tenths of a mile long. There's not a lot of places to, to dodge and weave to. Hey, it happens. So, like to see it. Now, your top five are unchanged here from the uh, first green-white checkered. Uh, the one change that you'll see now is Colton Everingham will start to the outside of row number three as uh, Lawrence had a problem. He's going to slide back to the eighth spot here for the restart still on the outside lane unfortunately for him i'm curious is there, have there been any warnings to dale shaw he's he's been firing fairly early but i'm not sure where don york the race director said they could he's been consistent 
where he's fired from, but it's really worked well. At, at some point, is Gareth Gonder going to be able to time this to actually keep up with the 81 or with the 83? Well, let's see. And, you know, just as you say that, Adam, oh, and they're stacked up behind him. Big crash in turn number four. And we'll go back under the yellow. And we will see. This could. So this is one of the things I know Don York has harped on, and that is brake checks. You cannot slow down. So once the pace car leaves the field, you cannot let off. You can't slow down. You've got to maintain your pace. A lot of, lot of bumper tag there. That, that caution will create hard feelings. I yeah. take back what I said after the last <laughs> one. Because the, the drivers won't be very understanding about this because that's an avoidable wreck. <laughs> oh, man. Poor, poor Ryan Dyson. We, we got a comment here on GeForce TV, Adam, uh, saying... How many coupons for that ride for Dyson? <laughs> oh, as we get another like look that. here. If we can, and I know I'm being a little needy here for you, Matt, can you give us a replay from the 81 onboard? I, I want to see if that chain reaction started all the way at the front row. So we'll be looking in the area here of Gareth Gonder in the 81. Okay, and I didn't mean Gonder caused it, but I wanted to see if it came right for the front row, because it definitely was an accordion that once yeah. it got back to about the fifth, sixth row, all hell was broken loose, but those things don't start in the fifth, sixth row. Right. Yeah, the first couple rows seemed like they uh, took off. And, and you know, Adam, you talked about Shaw on the restarts. Was it just me or did he take off a little late that time? Like later than what we've seen previous. Yeah. Keep in mind, Dale Shaw's a savvy racer. You do not want to restart the same way every time unless unless it is a distinct advantage, which is, I think, what he's found here tonight. But, yeah, it seemed to me he fired just a little bit later, and that's his prerogative as the race leader. And now it'll be interesting to see what he does here uh, for our final attempt here at a green-white checkered. And, you know, looking at, you know, he's still going to have to restart sixth, but Connor James has worked his way up to, to P6 here coming up on our final attempt at a green white checkered he's the first car in line with fresh tires uh from that round of lap 60 to 65 pit stops that we saw earlier I, i'm not sure that three lap or you know a green white checkered finish is enough time but um he is uh he is going to start outside row here we'll see what he can do maybe crack into the top five or even uh, steal a podium spot here to uh, talk to us in victory lane. So let's see what happens here. We are going to get them stacked up two by two. Final attempt at a green white checkered. Do we finish this one out? Does it end under the yellow? We will find out. Dale Shaw, Dustin Momberkat. If you're watching from home, we appreciate you tuning in. Now's the time to take your picks. pace truck pulls off of the racetrack let's see what shaw does on the restart goes a little early there into turn number four green lights are on for our final attempt here at a green white checkered and shaw takes a healthy lead into turn number one he's got a car length on momberkat and uh momberkat's got a bumper full of the 81 of gonder mcpherson and house round out the top five connor james is sideways off of turn four as the race leaders take the white flag Final trip around the Nashville Fairground Speedway for Dale Shaw. Down the back stretch. Momberkett, does he have anything for him? Last trip through three and four. Shaw looks pretty comfortable, and Dale Shaw will win here at the Nashville Fairground Speedway. Momberkett second, Gareth Gonder third, Brody McPherson and Jordan House will round out the top five. So Adam, it's your points leader who picks up a big one here tonight. Yeah, it was a wild finish. There was a lot of stuff going on from 6th back through 10th and on back from there. But uh, 
uh, you know, a good race. I, I thought it was a good show. I enjoyed watching it. Alex McCollum gets back to a top 10. Ray Morneau, that was one of the more eventful top 10s. And how about Colton Everingham, Steady Eddie? And a big hats off to everybody in the top five who ran that whole race on the same set of tires. And they hung on tight at the end. Oh, absolutely. Well, we'll get uh, Victory Lane stacked up for you here as Dale Shaw cuts the donuts here on the front straightaway. When we come back, we'll take you to Victory Lane to hear from Dale Shaw and the rest of your top three. Stay tuned. You're watching live coverage of the Winter Meltdown here on GeForce TV. What makes a trailer a Miska? Is it the heavy duty Canadian steel they are made from? Or is it the exceptional finish that will last year after year? How about knowing that these are the best back trailers in the industry? But these are the reasons you buy Miska. So what makes these trailers a Miska? It's the hard work and Canadians who craft them. We are Miska. We are Canadian Pell. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Ribs. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. A guy like this who relies on his truck for work knows that his truck will take care of him if he takes care of his truck. And WeatherTech has always been the ultimate protection. From floor liners to no drill mud flaps to tech liner for your truck bed to bump step to the handy underseat storage system. And Cup Phone keeps phones secure in any cup holder. Order your ultimate protection today at WeatherTech.ca. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Sausages and Street Dogs. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. Welcome back to the Nashville Fairground Speedway, where Dale Shaw has just won round number seven of the Grisdale Racing Products Winter Meltdown here from Nashville, Tennessee. And we've got your top three ready to go in victory lane. And we'll get right to it, and we'll start with talking to your third-place finisher tonight, Gareth Gonder in the 81. And, uh, Gareth, congrats on a, a great podium run here tonight. You were in the top five all night long, started fourth, finished third. Uh, tell us about your run tonight. Yeah, I know. It's great to um, to finish in the top three tonight and be back on the podium. Um, it was a tough race. I got to say tires were everything. And I think um, all of us up here used them up a little bit too much. So even if we could have got side by side to do some battling, I don't think the guy going for position would have been able to get much without using his bumper. Did it surprise you how many guys chose to pit there with about 35 or 40 to go? No, not really. You always figure like half the field's going to pit. Uh, I think it was last week that I was like the last car that didn't pit and that kind of scared me. But the way it seems is that the guys that get tires, they maybe try and get up to the front a bit too quick and cause a few incidents here and there. It definitely puts you in a risky territory there uh, to do so. So as long as you can take care of your stuff, you know, staying out wasn't a bad option tonight. No, not at all. And that's pretty much been the strategy this whole season is just uh, stay out, maintain the uh, maintain the tires and the track position. And, you know, we had those uh, three green-white checkered finishes tonight. We had to use all of them to get through to the end. How challenging was it trying to keep up with Dale Shaw on those restarts, man? He was changing them up every restart, it looked like. Yeah, it was definitely tricky. And, you know, the, the three guys that were around me, first, second, and fourth, they're all on the same team. So it was tough to make sure that you were hitting your mark when they were all going to hit their mark. And that was probably the biggest challenge of that all night. Well, you put together a great run here tonight. Tell us about the folks that support the effort for you. As always, um, we got to thank our great sponsors, um, El Grande Group, um, Sable Falls Tent and Trailer Park. We've got Canadian Union Skilled Workers, uh, Gallinger Capital, Scooch Mobile Phone Cases is on the car now, which is great that we can showcase them. And just great to have all these uh, sponsors supporting us. Well, a great run and a great job here tonight. 
There's Gareth Gonder, who will finish in position number two. And we'll send it over to Adam Ross, who's got our second place finisher, Dustin Mombercap. Dustin, you've shown a lot of speed this season, but really tonight was the first time you get the result to back it up and the, re the reward from all that speed. How does this one feel? Uh, it definitely feels um, really good to finally uh, show the speed that I've had every week and uh, finally get a result to show it. It, uh, it definitely feels really good. Dale's restarts. He mixed them up a little bit. I know you've got Shaw on the rear quarter panel of your car, but, but I got to think you're out there racing for that win. Uh, do you think there was anything you could have done differently to try to contend with his restarts? Uh, no, Dale's, uh, Dale's really good on restarts. He, he's really good at changing it up. And, uh, I'm just happy to be here from where I started, especially with how hard it was to pass tonight. Um, I just, yeah, I, I don't really feel like there's anything else that I really could have done. Dale was uh, pretty good tonight, and uh, it showed as he's uh, sitting in victory lane. Who do you want to thank on a solid second-place run? I got to thank Shaw Motorsports uh, with the real-life stuff. Dale Shaw, Jason Shaw. I really can't thank them enough. Um, I got to thank LaDuke Matthews Racing on iRacing, uh, Paul's Auto Body, Autrim Design of Barry. Um, just everyone who helps me, I really can't thank them enough. Well, great job tonight, Dustin. We'll see if you can get one spot better. We got uh, three more races left to try to get it done. Yeah, we're going to try. Thanks, guys. So there's Dustin Mombercat finishing in position number two. And we'll now talk to your race winner, Dale Shaw, who was able to survive three green-white checkered finishes tonight. And, Dale, I'm not sure that you did the same thing on any of those three restarts. Just played it to perfection tonight. Yeah, you, you got to keep everybody on their toes because if you start doing the same thing, they're going to kind of catch on to you, right? So uh, you're spot on there. You had to be different every restart. Tell us, uh, you know, the, the guys that took tires, they just never really got an opportunity to to work their way up through the pack. So the, the strategy call for you guys was right tonight. But was there really ever any consideration to pit from the lead? I can't imagine there was. Yeah, there was closer to that lap 30 range. If we had gotten a couple more green flag laps before lap 30, I would have thought about it. But uh, they, they had pitted so late. I when I think tires came out about 13th, 14th, and uh, I knew they weren't just going to they weren't going to be able to get it to the front. And one thing I enjoyed tonight was we had a good group of guys up front racing with us tonight. We actually had a lot of fun and we got to race a little bit of side by side. I got racing pretty hard with Joe early there, but uh I knew you had to go early and you had to, you had to get out front and just hold the lead. So uh, it worked out. That's got to be quite a balancing act of knowing I've got to go right now. I've got to make the move. I've got to get the lead, but at the same time, I'm sure you've got in the back of your head too. I got to have these tires for late in the race. Cause my goodness, we went almost 117, 18 laps tonight here at the yeah. end. You're exactly right. I, it's almost like you, you're walking a tightrope and you got to go, but you got to save it. And honestly, I used up more tire. I know, uh, Dustin and Gonder, those guys were better than me at the end, but I, I had the lead and I was able to control the restarts and get out front. And, uh, I think if probably we had a 10, 15 lap round, I was going to be in trouble, but, uh, it's just when you got a good group of guys around you racing with you, it just makes this deal a lot more fun. Well, that's for sure. It sir sure looked like everybody was having a good time tonight. And we had a question here uh, on the uh, on the GeForce TV channel uh, asking about when did Dale get the damage? But I think that was after the race was over. Uh, I touched the wall a couple of times. My dad used to, my dad raced late models for a year in Flame Roll Speed. I used to hit the wall once or twice a day. And I think I hit the wall about once or twice every 10 laps during that race. So uh, I know I touched the wall quite a few times and that might have been some damage. Gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what, man, our fans are tuned right in. They were tuned in tonight and uh, you put on a great show for them. Tell us about all the folks that uh, help support your effort. Well, honestly, like I said, I got to thank my buddies and, you know, everybody that was racing up front tonight. We had a lot of fun. It was a lot of clean racing up front. And uh, I got to thank you guys for putting the show on. I know my whole family, all my grandparents, my uh, my mother-in-law, um, all my fiance's family is watching. My dad sitting in Toronto watching with his wife. and. Uh, it's just, it, it, they all get excited about it. I know you guys seen what happened last week and I seen my grandfather the next morning and he goes, I couldn't even sleep last night. I was so mad. So uh, <laughs> my family really gets into it and they have a lot of fun and I have a lot of fun with this too. It gives me a break from uh, 
kind of the big things we got going on right now with the real racing. So, well, it certainly helps us get through the winter, doesn't it? <laughs> it? It does. It does, man. I, you know what? We're life is quite interesting right now, but it's, it's fun to get on here and kind of take a break from it and stuff like that. But, uh, one thing I wanted to mention on the broadcast here, we got some big stuff going on at Shaw Motorsports, uh, with the real life racing. So head on over to Facebook and find Shaw Motorsports and stay tuned because, uh, the 2021 season is going to be pretty cool for us and uh, we're looking forward to get racing. Awesome, man. Well, we'll definitely do that after this one here tonight. And again, congratulations on a great win and uh, helping out the points race here tonight. Great job. Thanks guys. Have a good one. All right, Dale Shaw, your race winner tonight. And Adam, I, I love it, man. Uh, everybody, the racers, the fans, family, everybody's getting into it. They've been loving the coverage and we've loved bringing it to them. The Shaw family lives for their racing. They're, they're a wild bunch, a fun bunch. And I'm glad Dale got one for them tonight after what he went through last week. That was uh, that was unfortunate, made up for it, stretched out his points lead a little bit. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to next Tuesday. We got three more of these. Yes, we do. Is uh, We'll get ready to head to the Langley Speedway next Tuesday night. You're not going to want to miss any minute of it. Uh, we will bring you live coverage at 9 o'clock right here on GeForce TV. We'll start the night out with the B main, and then we'll bring you through every lap of the A main uh, for the Grisdale Racing Products Winter Meltdown, presented by Caldecott Millwright Services and London Recreational Racing. We want to thank everybody for tuning in here tonight. And don't forget, you can get the coverage started early. Tune in to Rivals Race Chat. 8 p.m. on Tuesdays right here on GeForce TV. And that'll take you all the way to our coverage at 9 o'clock here on GeForce TV. I want to thank everybody who's tuned in tonight. Adam, thank you very much. Great job up in the booth with me here tonight as well. And Matt Thomas doing a spectacular job on video and replays here tonight from FLX Media Group. Been, uh, been a lot of fun to get to work together here over the off season. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and from the Nashville fairground speedway. Congratulations to round seven winner, Dale Shaw. We'll see you next Tuesday from Langley.